Each and every one of us takes journeys. Got it, got it. Each and every one of us takes journeys. Big journeys, small journeys, the decisions that we make each day, everything we do, and the people that we meet along the way make up our journeys. A lot of the people, the, our friends, our family, everyone that we, uh, that we meet and talk to, um, they, they have a big influence on our journeys. Here a while back, I decided that I wanted to take my own journey. I decided that I wanted to take a bike ride. There we go. Not just any bike ride, I decided that I wanted to undertake a 2,000 mile bike ride down the west coast from Vancouver, Canada to Tijuana, Mexico. This is called the Pacific Coast Bike Route. The Pacific Coast Bike Route is one that stretches through the Redwoods, the Oregon Coast, um, and I decided that I wanted to do it with my roommate at the time. Our plan was to pack up everything on our bikes and to take the journey over 2,000 miles. It would take us about 28 days to finish the, uh, to finish the bike trip. And we were doing it self-supported, which meant that we would be taking everything that we needed for the entire trip on our bikes. This meant assembling everything from tools to to cameras, to uh, mass amounts of Pop-Tarts, uh, you name it, we took just about everything. Um, my roommate even took a desert hat with him that, uh, just to spite me, I think. But it took us about eight months, but we gradually pieced together everything that we would need for said trip. And at the end of the, at the, end of the eight months, um, we headed off to Vancouver, Canada. Now, I'd never flown before, so packing up everything into a box and flying with everything that I would need to live for a month, including a bike, was a little daunting. But eventually, we figured everything out, and we were on the road. Now, my goal for this bike trip was to use my skills as a photographer to kind of farther the trip a little bit. My goal was to interview and converse, talk with, and photograph one stranger per day as I went down the west coast. Now, coming out of the Vancouver airport, we only had, we didn't have that much time left um, in the day. We put together our bikes in the Vancouver airport parking garage, which wasn't ideal, but eventually we got going, and I was nervous that even on the first day that I wouldn't be able to fulfill my goal of photographing uh, a person a day, but it wasn't long before we met uh, Darren. This is Darren. Darren pulled over in the middle of the road to talk to us in his Chevy Trailblazer. Darren is a Canadian school teacher and an extremely passionate one at that. Darren whipped over and hopped out of his Chevy Trailblazer and came over to see what we were all about. We learned that Darren was born and raised in the area and had a passion for adventure and for his students as well. He took a video of us before we parted and talked about how much adventure played a role in his life and how much his students could use it to farther their lives as well. And when he found out that we didn't have enough money or that we didn't have any Canadian money and didn't really know where we were gonna get any, we were well prepared, I can assure you. Um, Darren actually gave us, unbeknownst to us, plenty of money for at least a couple of meals. I was extremely glad that Darren was the first person that we met because he was way more passionate about our journey at that point than we were. <laughs> Moving on, we met Bill the Jerky Guy. I knew when I saw a sign for best jerky in the West over the top of a garage that that was the place where I was gonna find my next person. So I wandered over and uh, I met Bill the Jerky Guy. Um, Bill, of course, as you can guess by anyone who sells jerky out of the garage, is a wheeler and a dealer. And when we asked Bill why his jerky was the best in the West, he went through all kinds of, all kinds of stuff about the ingredients and where they were sourced from. And so, of course, we left with quite a bit of jerky. Um, Bill was very happy, but he was the next person that we met. Farther down the road in Oregon, when, again, we were very well prepared, the sun was setting and we were standing on a pier out in the middle of Oregon 
not quite knowing where we were going to sleep for the night. And Pat came along at just about the perfect time. Pat brought us into his house, fed us, and told us stories. We learned that Pat had also biked quite a bit. And by quite a bit, I mean he'd spent a good portion of his time cycling in the Arctic Circle, where he would do the Inuvik route, which maybe not my first choice, but Pat really enjoyed it. He'd done it at least a couple of times and had pictures and remnants of the trip hanging all over his apartment. He was an extremely gracious host and saved us in our time of need. In Pier 39 in Astoria, we met Time Bomb Tom Hilton. Tom was a character in himself, and he, had, he sold live Dungeness crab at a little shop called Hanthorn Crab in uh, Astoria, Oregon. Tom and his family had been in Astoria since 1850. He was the third generation of his family doing what he did and used to be a commercial fisherman before he started running the, uh, the Hanthorn Crab Company. He talked passionately about, about conservation and about the places that he loved and had spent all of his time. Farther down the road, and I mean literally on the road, we met traffic engineer John. John gave us, well actually, as we were pushing our bikes up a hill, we met John. Um, being Kansas kids, we did this a couple of times. Um, but John gave us water and some candies from a local confectioner, which at that point we were getting pretty hungry, so we were very happy about. But John had also biked all over the place. He'd spent time in Europe and all over the world cycling, and he loved to use his, his abilities as a traffic engineer and his pull to make, the world, to make the roads safer for cyclists. Now, now we get into some characters. If you spend all of your time for a month riding a bike, you're going to meet some characters. And these people were definitely, they definitely fall in that category. As we were stopped at a bridge in uh, Washington, in California, correct myself, in California, we heard some coughing from the woods and some rustling, and out emerged Matt, Matthew, Kate, and Jose Cuervo. And you know if you name your dog after hard liquor that it's probably going to be an entertaining story. So we, uh, we talked with Matthew, Kate, and Jose Cuervo for a little bit. They had grown up in Monsanto, California, and Kate was extremely giggly and hap happy because she had just gotten a job at a uh, local dispensary. Kate giggled and Jose Cuervo pretty much just quivered the whole time. And all in all, it was one of the better lunches of the trip. Very entertaining, I can assure you. And this is Teacher Jim. Don't know a whole lot about Teacher Jim. I managed to get his photo and talk to him a little bit at a brewery in Oregon. After a cold day of cycling, we stopped by to grab a beer, and Teacher Jim was there. Teacher Jim told us a couple of stories, promised that we could stay on his houseboat, and then sadly wandered away before we were able to stay on his houseboat. <laughs> it's a sad day, sad day. This is Bob and Gary. I knew by how many buttons down Bob was on his shirt that it would be an entertaining uh, conversation as well. The, uh, we met the pair at a McDonald's in California. We started talking to Bob and learned that he had a photography studio in Kansas City not far from where my roommate lived and grew up. He talked, to us, he talked to us about his son's band and showed off photos of the band and, of course, his playboy wife from back in the day, which he had precariously close to the uh, top of his photos. Um, in California, we met Ed and Sherry. Ed and Sherry helped us in a time of need as well. We were struggling with some injury problems and stopped along the side of the road when we started seeing these, seeing these really, really odd pedaled structures. We didn't quite know what they were, but they were from the kinetic races. The kinetic races are dubbed the Burning Man of Cycling and are a series of human-powered human -powered sculptures that people build and use. 
This was probably one of the most California things that I had ever seen. And Sherry and Ed had been watching them and, uh, and helping with some of the teams for quite a while. I think for probably around, they said, close to 40 years combined. They loved watching the sculptures, watching them being built. They loved helping making them. And they really enjoyed, and we really enjoyed, watching them. There was all kinds of animals. They had giant hippos with people inside them. They had unicorns. You name it, they had it. And this is Skylar. Skylar traveled with us for three days. Skylar was a little California flair to our Kansas trip. He was always wearing jorts and a plaid long sleeve shirt, no matter how hot it was. And, except for there. And he would always take naps. We would stop to eat, and every time he would just take a nap. I think I maybe saw him eat once or twice, but that just seemed to be his way about things. He was a surfer from Southern California and was on his way down to Baja to catch a swell. And I spent a lot of time with, I spent a lot of time with Skylar, and he was a big part of our journey. One of my favorite parts of the trip was sitting on the floor, sitting on the floor of a house in California, eating a raw coconut that Skylar had been carrying for an undisclosed amount of days. <laughs> um, probably the most California thing that I've ever seen, but I really enjoyed it. As we thought there, as we sat on the floor talking about life and eating a raw coconut, I thought about all the people that I had met on my trip and how much they had given me. Each one of these individuals added something to our trip that we could never have added ourselves. They brought something that we never could have brought ourselves and that we never would have thought of. Each of these individuals, each of these individuals was an integral part of our trip. At first, when I started out, I was extremely worried about being able to find people that would share their story with me and that I could photograph. And I didn't know if it would be possible for me to complete the, the, the photo a day. But not long into the journey, I realized that it was, not, it was a lot less about me and a lot more about just being open to the people around me, being open to their ideas and their ways of life. And although they might be different than mine, just being open to them. And don't get me wrong, the views were amazing. I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed the views. We did have problems. We had mechanical failures. We had, we had days where it was raining. When you're on a bike all day, you do have struggles. But for the most part, it was a pretty amazing trip. But as amazing as the views were, they weren't even close to amazing as the people were. Because each of the people that we met, we never really, we never really knew what they were going to bring to us. The community, the long distance cycling community, is one that fosters generosity and kindness like none other that I've ever seen before. We had people buy us hotel rooms when we had nowhere to stay and when we were, when we were having injury problems. We had people, complete strangers, invite us into our house when we were having troubles. Each of these people, had no idea who we were before the days that we met them, and they, were willing to, and they were willing to help us out in any way possible. They were willing to show us into their homes, to give us food, you name it. Each of these individuals played an integral role, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. In my time in long distance cycling, I've hosted people from all different countries, all different cultures, um, and from just about everywhere you can imagine. I've hosted Major League Baseball players, I've hosted doctors, lawyers, musicians, and over my time in cycling, I've met a lot of people, a lot of amazing people. The community, the long distance cycling community, is an amazing group of individuals. And they're kinder than just about any group of people that I've ever met. I've always loved TED Talks, and I've always enjoyed what they bring to the table. I've always loved, I've always loved, I have always loved um, the ideas that are brought forth about community and about how helping people enriches our lives and just the ideas brought forth through that. But my idea for this trip wasn't a new one. There's a lot of people who do the same exact thing in a lot of different places, but it is a powerful one. Each of the people that we met 
changed my life in some way, just as I hope that they changed mine. And if I would give something to you guys today, it would just be to be open in your community and allow diversity and um, other people's journey to affect yours. You never know what you might get. Thank you.